now, once again, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome back to the World Over Live. Religious minorities all over the world are being subjected to increasingly harsh treatment by their governments, particularly Christian minorities in hot spots like Syria or the recent renewed violence and kidnappings by Boko Haram in Nigeria. The climate for religious freedom seems increasingly grim. My first guest tonight is the chair of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. The commission just released its 2014 report on threats to religious freedom all over the globe. Welcome back to the program, Robert George. Robert, thanks for being here. Raymond, it's great to be back with you. Let's start with this terrible story, and it has really captured the world's eyes and ears. These kidnappings in Nigeria, 300 girls. We've been reporting on this, and your commission has been reporting on this for years. What has taken so long? It's difficult to get the public's attention to something bad that is happening somewhere abroad, especially if it's somewhere in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's even difficult to get the public's attention to good things that are happening in places like Africa. President right. Bush's wonderful efforts, for example, to combat AIDS in Africa got very little attention. But now we have something very bad. But it's not anything new, as you say. Mm -hmm. Horrific acts like the kidnapping of these girls have been going on now for years, yeah. and the Boko Haram and other uh, radicalized extremist groups have been behind it. So I'm glad we're finally getting the public's attention, and there's a lot more to learn about what's going on there. Yeah, I remember that story of the hundreds of boys killed in that dormitory where they burned the whole place, torched it. Thousands of people have been killed innocently. There. Less than a year ago, that uh, that uh, catastrophe or atrocity happened. And of course, as you say, over, uh, over the last 10 years or so, it's been thousands of people killed. Now, now, your commission wanted to have Nigeria classified as a terrorist organization. They actually urged that in years gone by. Now it is classified by the State Department as a terrorist organization. Boko Haram, not Boko Nigeria. Haram, not, Boko that's Haram. right, not, not Nigeria. Um, why the reluctance to do so? early in this administration? Well, uh, you'll, you're going to have to ask somebody in the administration that question. It's something we have been strongly urging for a long time. And all I can say is that I'm glad that the administration has now gotten around to it. And now let's move forward. In fact, in our report, we, we recommend that, uh, that in, the, in the world as we live in it today, that we no longer focus exclusively on nation states and on governments, but also on terrorist organizations who deserve designations as gross offenders against religious freedom, whether where, we're talking about Boko Haram or we're talking about Al Qaeda right. or whoever it is. Yeah, where is the most uh, outrageous example of religious freedom being constricted? What country at this point? Well, it's a tough competition. We'd certainly have to have North Korea near the top of that mm -hmm. list. Uh, we would have China, uh, which is becoming, it will soon be the nation's, uh, the world's largest Christian nation. There'll be more oh. Christians in China than in any other nation. Pakistan? Pakistan is an abuser. It is not currently on the list of countries of particular concern, the, the list of the worst yeah. offenders. We call them CPCs, countries yeah. of particular concern. But our commission, uh, for the twelfth year now is recommending to the government, to the State Department, that uh, Pakistan be designated as a country of political of particular concern, which will trigger certain sanctions and uh, uh, steps that need to be taken. I want to play a little bite. This is Bishop Makram Gassis. We reported on this earlier in the program. Sudan has been under unrelenting attack by the North, the government in the North. We're talking about the Christians in the southern Sudan. Correct. Yeah. And now you have the bombing of the people in the Nuba Mountains. Here is Bishop Gassis reacting to the bombing of his hospital in the Nuba area. Listen. The Mother of Mercy Hospital is a Catholic Church health institution which offers life-saving services without distinction based on religion, tribe, or political affiliation. By targeting our hospital, I told the President, you are targeting our Muslim and Christian brothers and sisters as well as continuing the religious oppression of the Catholic Church in the Sudan. Such unjustified action will have consequences within the universal Catholic Church. Why has the world looked away as these people in Sudan continue to suffer over many, many years? Again, uh, in Africa, which has suffered so much, mm -hmm. uh, the world seems not to have much interest. And yet there are th millions of people 
suffering there, many of them suffering for their religious beliefs, a great many of them Christians, not exclusively yeah. Christians, suffering for, for their religious beliefs. Yeah. There are Muslims who are suffering for their religious beliefs. Russia's on the list this year. Uh, uh, well, you, not, on, like the, not on the CPC list, right. no. It's it, what we call Tier 2. It's a nation that we're watching. We're concerned Why? about the Putin regime. Well, laws, for example, that discriminate against members of minority religions, uh, laws that uh, enable the government to uh, step on basic civil liberties, freedom of speech, freedom of association, and so forth, sometimes in the name of uh, protecting religious interests. So we're concerned about the situation deteriorating under President Putin in, uh, in Russia. What is the most distressing part of this job for you personally, the heading up this, this uh, International Religious Freedom Commission? I can tell you what it is. It's learning facts like this one. Seventy-five percent of the people of the world live under regimes which grossly abuse the religious freedom and other human rights of their people or mm. stand by while violent mobs or terrorists attack innocent people, Christians, Baha'is, Jews, uh, members of minority Muslim groups with impunity, with the government doing nothing. Mm. Tell us about this. You, I'm going to change gears just for a little bit yeah. here, and then we'll get back to religious freedom, uh, because this touches on it, I think. At the UN, the Commission on Torture asked the Vatican in and grilled them this week, suggesting that sexual abuse of minors is indeed torture. And uh, they wanted to focus on even some of the teachings of the church. Your thought on this, what is informing this? And is this in its own way sort of a, uh, a way to strong arm uh, and control religious doctrines and beliefs? The first thing that has to be said whenever any topic touching on the abuse of children comes up is that the abuse of children by anyone at any time, sexual or otherwise, is an outrage. Mm -hmm. The second thing that needs to be said is that when there are clergy of any faith, whether they are Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, Muslim, uh, and all faiths, unfortunately, right. have no had faith their offenders, yeah. uh, it's a double uh, outrage. Uh, where uh, uh, this occurs, uh, there is criminality, and criminality should be punished with the force of the law. Now, having said all that, it's very important to say all that, and those are the most important things to say. The next thing that has to be said is this UN business is a farce. The UN is once again bringing itself into disgrace. Uh, this is a naked attempt to attack the Catholic Church and to stigmatize and marginalize Catholics on the basis of the Church's teaching about the sanctity of human life and marriage and sexual morality. Mm -hmm. uh, secularist forces who simply abominate the Church's teaching on these matters and have a different uh, gospel, a kind of pseudo-gospel of sexual liberation, mm -hmm. have seized upon offenses that were committed by Catholic priests and errors that were made by bishops, and that's true. Right to attempt to attack Catholic teaching itself. And that's a disgrace, that's a triple disgrace, and it ought to be called for what it is, and I call it a farce. Mm. Tell me about Syria for a moment. Uh, we have been covering this story. The Patriarch is coming up in moments, uh, the Patriarch of Damascus, yes. to talk about this. Uh, for years, we've been watching what has been described as a civil war, but there are a lot of religious undercurrents oh, yes. there. What is the record of the Assad regime vis-a-vis -vis minorities? And where is this headed? This is a sad story. You asked me about the toughest parts of this job. Here's yeah. another tough job. Uh, the truth is there are no good guys currently anywhere in sight in this civil war in Syria. The Assad regime's record is abysmal. And the record of the rebels, so -called the terrorists, so-called rebels, or actually in many, many cases terrorist uh, entities is equally abysmal. And that's why, because of the transgressions against religious freedom and the abuse of religious minorities committed by both sides, we are for the first time recommending, our commission yeah. uh, is recommending that Syria be placed on the CPC list, countries of particular concern. Robert George, thank you so much for thank coming you, in and for all your work. I hope you'll come back. I certainly will. It's thank a pleasure you. being with you again. And you can read the full 2014 report by the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. I've linked it on my Facebook page. Go there. Thank you.